who's ready for some football? Are you ready for some football? I'm ready for some football. So we got Clash Your Sports again. I'm trying to, you know, try to figure out what reactions I can do without getting copyrighted and still get views. <laughs> nah, but uh, why was Jason Seahorn the last white cornerback in the NFL 20 years ago? Why? Tell me why ain't nothing but a party. Backstreet Boys, gotta love it. All right, well, let's get into this. Let's see exactly why the last white cornerback was Jason Seahorn 20 years ago. Throughout the whole field, like you're playing cover one. Is it, what's harder than playing cover one and just staying in somebody's hip? You can't give up. A yard of separation, otherwise it's completion. It's Not so freshman. good. It's so good that white. That that's you see that's the problem. Like it, it's look. I promise there's no shame to white white people white people that uh you know want to play a certain position and it's not it's just really trying to shame them. Trust me, there's enough racism going going around out here in this world. Uh, it's not that, it's just, you know, white people just are naturally just, they just seem to, you know, not be athletic enough or fast <laughs> enough to really keep up with these wide receivers who are normally black, you know, and they can't keep up with them, you know, like, just like what Jason Kelsey just said. Like, do you know how hard it is to play cover one and you have to pl uh, stay at a wide receiver's near hip and keep uh, and stay at his near hip the whole time? Otherwise, one inch of separation and it's a completion. Like, that's the hardest thing in the world to do. And asking a, a, white, NF a white player to do that is a very tough task. All right, just ask Charlie Waters, a legend for the Dallas Cowboys. Just get, just go ask him how hard it was playing cornerback, you know, as a white cornerback. Like, go ask him. Go ask him how hard it is. That dude was getting beat the whole time in the 1972 NFC Championship game. Um, against Charlie Taylor, like he was getting burnt like toast. You know, he just wasn't fit for the cornerback position. He just didn't have the speed to play corner at all. So he switched. Um, Tom Landry switched him back over to his natural position of strong safety in 1976, and he would go on to have a pretty solid career because of it now i don't know if, i don't think he's in the hall of fame unfortunately you know yet but he will be there cliff harris got in it won't be too long until charlie waters will nonetheless um yeah man just go ask him bro it's hard you know it's hard out here for a pimp when you're trying to get this money for a rent <laughs> try to play quarterback anymore like they just said you're done it's too hard of a position uh, it's too physically demanding can't even that's funny as hell the quarterback is a position in the nfl where some of the fastest and most athletic players play it's a position that relies heavily on immense forward backward and lateral speed as well as anticipation and quickness it requires one to defend opposing wide receivers that may have the speed and quickness of that of a cheetah and there's also a ton of trash talking involved in the position, yet the last white cornerback to start a game in the NFL was Jason Seahorn for the New York Giants, and he retired at the end of 2003. 
floor for in all fairness, calling Seymour the last white corner means ignoring the countless others with the likes of Kevin Casemart, who started for the Bengals from 2001 to 2003, Ethan Gilmer's single impressive snap as a corner for the Bengals in 06, and Troy Apke's short stint with the Washington Commanders all had in the last 20 years. Oh, see, I think don't get, get, like don't get hit by run. him. That's how you know that shit's hard. If we, if we all don't know him, it doesn't count. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, let's not also forget Patriots receiver Julian Edelman for the time he was plugged in and asked to play over 13 regular season games as a slot corner in 2011. So it does beg the question, why are there no white cornerbacks in the NFL? I kind of just answered I kind of just answered it for you. Jason Kelsey answered it for you. Dang, locking up the playmaker? His tremendous athletic ability, coupled with size and speed, and knack for making spectacular plays, made Seahorn a very solid corner. However, yeah, Seal you see, that's the problem. Like, you don't see that very often. A white guy with that kind of size, that kind of athleticism, that kind of speed, physicality. It's not very often that you see that all built in all built into one guy like that you know it's just you don't see it very often that's why they just most coaches just don't give them a chance 1998 preseason game saw the california native decline in production as more nagging injuries soon came his way jason's nfl career spanned a total of nine seasons where in total he recorded 458 tackles with 19 interceptions and one of which was ranked seventh all time by NFL Films after Seahorn made a circus grab while flailing and rolling on the field. Oh yeah, I remember in that. Six in the 2000 divisional round against the Philadelphia Eagles. That season, the New York Giants made it all the way to Super Bowl 35, getting by the Vikings in the championship game after Seahorn single-handedly shut down the best wide receiver in the game in Randy Moss. Randy Moss? The Giants would eventually be stopped short of glory after losing to the 2000 Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, that dude was good. But nonetheless, Jason Seahorn started 73 games for the Giants at corner and eventually signed with the St. Louis Rams as a safety in 2003. Oh, by the way, Jason also had a national commercial advertisement for Charles Schwab, along with renowned NFL trash talker Shannon Sharp. Put your pay transaction fees on your mutual funds. Your mama pays full commission. You know how to calculate a fee ratio. Injured in the war when started with Morgan & Morgan, it's so easy. They are the largest injury law firm in America with over 800 attorneys operating in 49 states while we're recovering over 15 billion. Now, there are no white corners in the NFL. All 160 cornerbacks are black, and for a league that is made up of approximately a quarter white, you can see them cover almost every position in the game, except this one. So there are a few things that I believe attribute to these results. But first off, there is no simple answer to this question, as there are a variety of factors that could contribute to the lack of white cornerbacks in the NFL. Stereotypes certainly play a key role. White players in some quarters are stereotyped as not having the requisite speed and quickness to be able to shine at the position. So this likely prevents young white football players from attempting to play the position, coaches from placing them at cornerback, and college recruiters from recruiting them. It's a trickle-down effect that starts all the way back to when we're young and how the stereotype is so dominant that many young players likely remove themselves from the competition for spots before it even begins. For example, let's take a look at black. Like, bro, wait. You can say that 
you know, like white cornerbacks are just as uh, they're literally just as you know discriminated as black owners. You give me two white cornerbacks, and I will give you one black owner. Because where are they at? Where are they at? How about this? I'll give you... I'll give you three black coaches, head coach, offensive coordinator, and defensive coordinator, and I'll give you one white punt returner. Because where are they at? <laughs> I'm just saying, they're almost as discriminated as those. Like, they're almost similar. They just don't take a chance on them. Stereotypes associated with blacks in this particular position. Somewhere along the way, the intellectual capacity of the black quarterback somehow, some way, came into question. So much of the narrative, the, the false narrative, is that African Americans couldn't play the quarterback just because they weren't smart enough. They didn't have the leadership ability. The fact that many back in the day believed blacks weren't smart enough or had the mental capacity to lead a team in the quarterback position just goes to show you the blatant stereotypes that was within the game of football. And this is why there were very few black QBs as teams favored white quarterbacks. Fewer black kids in Pee Wee leagues got the chance to play QB and the same was true in high schools and colleges, hence we only saw a handful of black quarterbacks make it to the pros. This has since changed as lately we've seen an abundance of blacks in the quarterback position breaking the mold, leading teams to Super Bowls, winning league MVPs, and basically just changing the whole overall perception of race in the position. Yet sometimes this process of change may take longer for some others. Then you've also got to consider the fact that with so many successful black quarterbacks in the modern game, this will translate and affect the youth as they too will try and emulate their heroes and play quarterback from a young age. And as time passes, you will see more and more coaches no longer pushing black youth away from playing QB. And this is one of the main reasons why Jason Seahorn was one of the true last Little white league quarterbacks Little League really doesn't the count NFL. sometimes. The fact that he was automatically pigeonholed into playing another position until his coach caught a glimpse I mean, of just think, like, the football is almost as big as their, god, as their god as their head. How can they throw it at like that young of an age? Yes. Very, very few. It just doesn't very, show up very often few. in white bodies. Even if I'm a white coach or a coach who's playing for the white cornerback, I'm still thinking, why is he here? I don't want him. He can't run. He can't jump. He's too damn nice. That's another stereotype, by the way. Nice, polite. NFL coaches want an effing baller. Next, and this will certainly be a bit more of a controversial reason for some, is the fact that plain and simple, blacks tend to be more athletic than their counterparts in sports that are more accessible to them. In general, they're faster and taller, with longer Achilles tendon and shorter calf muscle, which allows them to excel more in sports that involve a lot of running. Their bodies explode faster, run faster, and have a fast twitch muscle advantage over other races. And you don't have to be an Olympics enthusiast to know that those from African descent dominate the 100 meters. Simply put, blacks possess an inherent physical advantage for athletic competition. Hence those other NFL positions that require an immense amount of speed and quickness such as the running back and receiving position have seen white players almost essentially fizzled out in those roles. 
Then when you consider the fact that they have longer limbs with smaller circumferences, this translates to having a higher center of gravity compared to others of the same height. Asians and whites tend to have longer torsos, so their center of gravities are much lower. The height of an individual's center of gravity affects how fast his feet are moving when they hit the ground. And all these physical traits have led more black players to play in the position of a cornerback, which is probably the most athletic position on a football field. That said, to tie everything I discussed in this video, I found or that kickoff SIR return. Dustin Fox put a brief stint in the league, and I think his story encapsulates all the reasons why we do not see any white cornerbacks in the NFL. <laughs> Fox was a starting quarter for four years at Ohio State and won a national title before being drafted in the third round of the 2005 NFL Draft by the Minnesota Vikings. However, before he even got to the league, the 5'11", 185 pound corner, who also ran a 4-4-3 at the combine, was suddenly moved to safety. Dustin arrived at the 05 combine expecting Dang. to see his name listed with the other corners, but instead found himself amongst the list for safeties none of whom were smaller than Fox's 191-pound frame at the time. Out on top of that, he had a 43.5-inch vertical, which was second-best amongst the quarterbacks at the Combine and fourth-best among all players. So check this out. Dude had all the size, attributes, and physical traits to play the position, but everyone in the league wrote Dustin Fox off as a corner. And, and I don't understand that. Like, I said... It's not very, that's like, that's the problem why there's, you, you like, uh, white cornerbacks don't, they really are, you know, non-existent. Because it's not very often that you see a guy with that kind of speed, that kind of size, that kind of physicality, you know, uh, to be able to play the cornerback position you know when you're white like it's you you just don't really see that but this guy had all the measurables and they still listed him as a corner why why he had he had it all bro like why did they write him off interviewed in the article here's what he had to say why didn't i come into play as a cornerback my measurables were better than half the corners in the league. I made plays at Ohio State, started 37 college games, and I can't even get a shot. I vertical jumped 40 inches. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you, like, history can, pa I'm telling you, past history can really uh, intimidate people. Past history can really scare a lot of people away. And that's really the only proclamation i can really think of you know uh as far as why despite having all the measurables they listed him as a safety and they didn't they wrote him they wrote him off and didn't want to give him a chance at corner i can only think that past history of you know cornerbacks uh of cornerbacks i think has something to do with, you know, the uh, scouts and whatever. Uh, basically, they they he scared they it scared them off. Like they didn't want to put him as a corner, so they decided to put him at safety because the past history is what scares you away sometimes. Um, but I don't know, maybe someday white cornerbacks will eventually break the mold. You never know. I don't know, but you saw black, black quarterbacks ended up eventually breaking the mold, you know? So you never know. Maybe same thing can happen, uh, for a uh, white cornerbacks. I don't know, but they've just lately been starting to go extinct. I was as good as or better than half the cornerbacks in the NFL. They got the opportunity, I did it. The NFL was great, but I always felt like I never got a fair shake playing the position because I was white. And this basically reiterates my points earlier about why there are no white corners in the league. And just think about the countless other kids who read this article and see all the barriers white players face in the position. They have to work twice as hard just to get noticed, and even if they do make it to the league, there's a good possibility they could be devoted to safety. 
That being said, I'm sure there are countless other reasons as to why blacks continue to dominate the corner position in the NFL, and if I'm going to be honest, I don't see it changing anytime soon. Unfortunately, it is what it is, and unless changes are made on the youth level all the way up to the NFL, Jason Seahorn may be the last true white cornerback to ever lace yeah, well, um, you know, I don't know. He, you could be right, but it's just, you know, I don't know, bro. Like, I, I don't know how to feel about it as far as, you know, white cornerbacks just not really being a thing really nowadays, you know, for the last 20 years. But, you know, like, it is what it is, you know, but... Nonetheless, that was Clasher Sports. Um, subscribe to him. I will leave the link down in the description to his channel. You know, and also then come back and subscribe to me. You know, so like and subscribe. Comment down below suggestions of other videos y'all want me to watch. My last Clasher Sports video got quite, got, you know, a few audience. So I figured... Why not do another uh, reaction, you know? Guy clearly knows his stuff, you know? And I don't know. We might continue this. So, um, that has been my time. That is it. Peace.